Hello, YouTube fam. How y'all doing? It's your unk. It's your Uncle Tim. From Uncle Tim Rants and Reviews, fam. You know, I want to know, what do all of you all do when you run out of space? You know, far as for your collectibles, far as for, you know, whatever it is that you collected, what do you do when you run out of space? I'm sitting here thinking to myself, you know, I got to move stuff down, take stuff down, you know, rearrange stuff to get stuff up, you know, because I want to display something different. And I've just been sitting here thinking to myself, damn, man, you done ran out of space again. And see, this is how it is, fam. You know, when you're doing these hobbies, you're doing these um, a bulk lots and stuff like that, you know, even if the lot is only four pieces, you know, based on how old the pieces are and, you know, the availability of the pieces, you're going to pay a pity, um, a pretty penny. You know, some of the sought after stuff is very expensive, fam. Um, but this is one of the reasons why I recommend buying lots off of eBay. You know, um, I don't know any other place where you can really buy lots, you know, of action figures or video games or shoes. You know, because sometimes I buy lots of shoes. You know, um, they have these new shoes and, you know, all... If you want to know, I would explain all of that in the comment section. If you want to know anything about gym shoes, Funko Pops, video games, um, Hot Wheel cars, DVDs, Blu-rays. Um, but we'll just talk about action figures here. Transformers and things like that. I took my Transformers down because I had no place to really display them. I only had a few of them up there. But those was the ones that I liked, sought after, found... You know, got upgrade kits to them, fam. You know, see, this is the thing about the hobby. The hobby sometimes has a mind of its own. It takes over sometimes. You get the feigning like it's like it's drugs or something. You get the scratching and you know, you like, ooh man, I'm really I really want that one, you know. But you know what? That's normal. It's normal when you got a hobby that's not really impacting nobody else's life. You know, I only buy stuff when I have the disposable income. I don't buy it when, you know, it's time to pay the rent. Oh man, I bought like all these figures. <laughs> That's why I can't stop the pre-orders, man, because these pre-orders add up, man. Over a period of time, you, you study see figures that you like, you study see games you like, and you just buying stuff, man, and you got it all on pre-order. I looked at the total of some of the stuff I was adding it up. I said, oh, hell no. <laughs> I stopped taking stuff off because it was too much. And, you know, that's the thing. Be a part of the solution. Don't be a part of the problem. Because, see, the problem is that nobody know how to solve the problem. That's what happens most of the time. When people get addicted to doing things like buying stuff, it's, it's, it's deep. Collecting is almost an addiction at times, you know, and you have to rein yourself in, you know. You see something that you like and you like, man, that new Spider-Man, oh man, did you see the new X-Men, did you see that new Colossus, you know, uh, Juggernaut uh, two-pack. You know, even though it's not new right now, but you know, you see this stuff and you're like, man, man, you know, how I'm going to go about getting some of this? You know, fam, that's the thing. I pick and choose what I want to get myself into. So far, I bought like a couple of um, G.I. Joe Classified. I bought uh, a couple of um, DC Multiverse a couple of Masters of the Universe. Um, I think I bought one or two uh, Thundercats uh, from Super 7. And I bought four Marvel Legends, but I think uh, four more coming. You know, see, the point is right now, I'm cherry picking. I'm buying the stuff that I want. You know, that I would like to see in my collection. Not just having a whole bunch of space filling. That's what really killed the space in the beginning. So I started weeding it out taking out figures that I'm just looking at like, yeah, man, I don't even know why I got this. 
this is why I'm looking at it like you got to really rein yourself in with collecting, man. You will waste a lot of money. This is why I say even with Funko Pops, you got to be very careful. Because Funko Pops got so many figures popping up left and right that, man, you be buying so many of them. But you bought a whole bunch of duds that even if you want to get rid of them, nobody will buy them from you. This is why I say pick stuff that you like. Just don't go bad series and waves. I used to do that with the McFarlane Spawn series. I had all of them at one point in time in packaging. And I was just buying wave out the way because they were coming. And man, it was figures I didn't even like. I'm like, man, I need to stop this. I'm wasting money. I'm wasting valuable resources on things that, you know, but I was really young at the time. At that time, I think I was like 21, 22. Uh, I had a gigantic video game collection at that time. You know, like I said, when I was younger, there were a whole bunch of thrift stores that were selling uh, video game systems for like 3 and $5. And, you know, Nintendos, Nintendo 64s, Sega Genesis, Sega CDs. Dude, I got a Sega CD for 10 damn dollars. Um, flea Market, I bought like three of them because they had them for $20 a piece. Man, you know, I had them in all kind of the Sega CD. Man, and see, that's the thing. I was like a complete completionist. I had that damn thing. It was sitting on shelves. It was looking pretty. It was something amazing to behold. And you know, I go through those phases, like at one point in town, the shelving units were all video games. You know, and instead of, you know, where the DVDs are at and these uh, see-through clear, um, cases uh, it used to be video games in all of these and man I'm telling you I had video games coming half of the shelves in uh, systems on the top half and it was looking really cool but like I said over a period of time you get to changing up stuff that you do you know at one point in time <laughs> I was a couponer and these shelves were full of nothing but coupon deals like uh cereal across the top you had you know you had all type of stuff in here you had uh canned goods you had anything that you could think of i was picking up and i mean it was a deal man you know what but see i go through phases like that i go through phases where i buy a lot of stuff and uh as far as with my gym shoes that you see back here i wear a pair a day so if you say you know oh, you're not wearing no shoes I'm not wearing them all in a day, but I'm wearing a pair a day. And, you know, you go through it like that. And this is what I'm saying. Your hobby got to make sense. It got to make some sort of sense to you. You got to have a connection with what it is that you're doing. If there's no connection, it's just a whole bunch of time you wasted. Because if you don't have a connection to the pieces, you know, you ever go to somebody and they, you know, show you their collection... And they can name every place where they got the stuff from that they're showing you. Like, oh, yeah, man, I got that Skeletor from um, a Target when we were out in um, Idaho. You're like, damn, like, in Idaho? Like, yeah, it was on clearance for $4. And you sitting here like, damn, like, yeah, you know, with taxes, it came up to full something, something, something. And you sitting here like, you know, when people start telling you where they got their pieces from, how much they cost, uh... You know, just what it meant to them when they found it. You know, I got some special pieces in here to me. And, you know, one of the biggest pieces that I got that I really love is the Skyfire back here. And it's with the G.I. Joe collection. And, you know, Skyfire. You know, not Jetfire. Skyfire from the Transformers. I mean, with the big red booster pack on the back. Man, that was the bomb. That was the real one. You know, because when they made... Jetfire, they made them into a Robotech figure, you know. I said, what is this? But when they made this one, man, it was nothing short of a damn near miracle. You look at that and you be like, that is the cartoon right there. That is the cartoon. They did a good job. You know, with my DVDs, you know, I pick them up sometimes from Dollar Trees. I pick them up from Best Buy. Um, just everywhere, fam. You know, I pick them up anywhere with DVDs or so. Walmart, Target. The deal that I'm looking at is, fam, you need to find what speaks to you and why it speaks to you. You know, what part of your life that, you know, this was part of 
or what it brung to it. You know, I see a lot of people with just single collections where I see a lot of people with a, you know, media room like DVDs, laser discs, VHS, that stuff, high eight tapes. I see all of that. But you know, some people got all action figures. Some people only got Transformers. Some people got video games. Some people got certain video games like Nintendo 64 and Nintendo period. You know, you got some people with Sega Genesis rooms, um, Xbox or PS5 rooms, Funko Pop rooms, gym shoe rooms. Just fam, it's, it, it's amazing what people out here doing. And see, this is what I'm asking a lot of you all. I put an email in my community section saying, you know, send me pictures of your collection for I could display it, for people could see it. You know, fam, I believe, you know, we all live in various places around this world. You know, I got a lot of people that live overseas, you know, that like to watch the channel. Fam, you know what? Nobody trying to come to your house and take your stuff. And I want to make sure I explain that. Fam, you know, it's just people want to see what you got. And I know you're like, oh, show me what you got. i show you what I got all the time. It, you know, my collection is not as big as you all think it is. It's big and totes, yeah. Because I really don't have no display area. You know, you got to have your TV for your game consoles. You know, you got to have the wall for the shoes and the pops. You know, you got the wall for basically the video game stuff. It's a radiator here. It's a picture that I love that I display. You know, this area that I call my particular man cave, you know, my area, it's me. What do your area look like? Do your area look like you? I'm talking about the things that you enjoy. Are they displayed? How do you display them? Are they displayed in a way that just speaks something to your character? Are they just displayed in a way that you just say, well, I collect, I just got it sitting here. You know, I want to pose some of the stuff, but, you know, I don't have room to pose. So I just leave them all standing or marching. Some of them are not able to pose in correct manner. So I leave that alone. You know, certain things need a lot of work with it. And sometimes if you're not putting all that effort and all that energy into it, it's different. You know, some areas I have really, really big items that take up a lot of space. You know, a lot of you all may not know. Um, it's the G.I. Joe um, space shuttle up there. Along with the booster. Then it's the Crusade. Then it's the Defiant. Then it's another, I think, Defiant right here or Crusade. It's, I got like three space shuttles up here. Uh, it's three Terra drones. It would have been damn near five because people were just selling them. When I said I was bad, and people were just selling them to me for damn near fifty dollars, and I'm talking about not fully stocked, fully pieced. You know, some of them are just shells. You know, the up and bottom, the upper and the lower. You know, and some of them I was just able to find pieces for real simple, quick. Fam, you know what? Your hobby should be a lot about you. It should say a lot about you. You should be happy when you collect it. You should be happy to do your thing. You should be happy to talk about what it is that you do. If you're not happy to talk about your hobby, your collection, if you speak multiple languages and somebody asks, oh man, you speak that language? Oh man, could you say something in it for it? Man, I've been waiting to hear somebody say something in that language for the longest. And when somebody gives you that attention and you don't say anything and you freeze up, you miss the opportunity. When somebody talking or hinting at something that you do, I have a friend that runs and I mean, man, when you give this person attention, they tell you everything that they do because you ask. And you know, and you're not playing, you just ask the person about it because you were serious. This is what you do. Somebody asks you about your hobby, break it down. Be proud of it. Don't ever be ashamed of your hobby. This is yours. This is what you do. You know what, whether if you are a man or a woman, you know what? When people are saying, well, oh, you play with toys? Oh, man. You're a grown man. You know what? I could sell these. S so what? You know, it don't make you uh, less of a man or a woman if you collect. Man, please, live your best life. 
I got friends who have nothing but comic book collections. I had comic book collections. At my last place, I had comic books across the wall. I'm talking about the good ones, the good X-Men with the great art, the good image comic books from um, Mark Silvestri, um, Michael Turner, um, shit, Rob Liefeld, uh, Todd McFarlane. I had some of the good stuff posted up on the wall. And when you looked, you was like, damn, look at them books. Great artwork. That's what you're trying to see. You're trying to see what it is in people's hobby. I had Hot Wheel cars displayed across the wall. The good ones. The ones that you say, man, okay, I, I see that. Like I said, I'm not in here trying to sell Hot Wheel cars. I buy them and leave them in the package. Because, like I said, last time when I showed you these, this is not me trying to buy things and, you know, sell them and, you know, and say I'm going to recoup money. No, this is me having fun with a hobby. And like I said, if you go start a hobby out with your kids, be serious about it. Start them out slowly. Don't put them with anything that's going to cost an arm and a leg because you don't know if they'll like it or not. And you don't want to waste your money. You know, again, there are kid toys that they can collect. There are kid toys they can play with. At the end of the day, it should just be about bringing more people into the hobby. You know, I understand that, you know, people ain't feeling it all the way. You know, like you letting people know where the good spot's at and, you know, I can't shop there no more. Hell, if nobody shopped there, they'd go out of business. Some people got to shop there. And this is where we all miss, you know, the big light bulb moment sometimes where it's, if we don't share where we buy stuff from these places go out of business if they ain't making no money they won't stay open this is why i say we gotta work together to keep these these iconic places where you find some of this good stuff open but you know a lot of times we don't want to share anything because we feel that you know somebody might luck up on something that they were looking for but fam, if somebody luck up on it, it wasn't meant for you to find. You'll find what's meant for you. And fam, you know what? That's why I use eBay a lot. When I look at these other apps, they're not doing anything. I look, you know, at some thrift stores, you know, I'm not finding too much. You know, I was on pick up some turtles. They had a big lot of turtles and I was on buy them and I said, damn, but I'm not really into Ninja Turtles like that. I just have a hundred turtles sitting here that I don't know nothing about. I don't watch the show, don't get me wrong. I'd probably watch the whole original series. But, you know, my thing is, you got to be into that item at that time to talk about it, to feel right about it, to, you know, bring more people in. You know, one thing about these conversations that we have, they're not just uh, me talking about one thing. These are me talking about multiple things because... There are so many things happening. You know, when I was talking about the space thing for our shelving and, you know, running out of space, man, this is a issue that all collectors deal with. Running out of space in the room, whereas it's encroaching in the other rooms, and that's just life. My wife's hobby encroach almost into this area that I got. She got her own she cave. And, you know, I don't say nothing about that. Why should I? She don't say nothing about my stuff. You know, sometimes you gotta be right. And sometimes when you being right, you could understand who's right. It's not a choice between right and wrong. Sometimes either you right or you wrong. And sometimes both people are right. Both way of thinking. Sometimes there's no wrong answer. You know, like, if you see something and you say, man, uh, this price at $500, it's a hundred figures. <laughs> People be having fun outside. You got a hundred figures, $5 a figure, $500. Now you got some figures in there that's worth damn near 50 to a hundred dollars. My point is $500 sometimes is a good deal. You're not going to find some stuff for cheaper. I remember I was looking at this one lot a long time ago. It had these Zoids that I was looking for. In that one lot, it had a $150 Zoid. 
wasn't all the way pieced together. You know, they just said they had pieces. And I found all the pieces inside the boxes. And out of that lot, that one toy was worth 150 And I bought the lot for $75. And the other two uh, toys in the lot equal to $75. You know, so the other one was just a big deal. Fam, sometimes you got to look and you got to look even harder because the value is there. You just sometimes don't see it because you see those big price tags. Like I said, those are suggested prices. Those are not always the right price. You know, sometimes people got to feel they got a deal off you. And if you knock it down to half, they be like, yeah, man, I got him to change the price. But nine times out of ten, the price he gave you probably was the original price. You just marked it up high because you start high, then you go down to low. You never start low, then go to high. You start high, then go to low. Because it's a lot more wiggle room to get down and you can have some money in the process. But fam, this video was long. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Peace out.